Welcome to our latest episode, Why Expatriating from the U.S. Without a Strong Second Passport is a Gamble. In this episode, I'm going to be talking about the risks of expatriating from the U.S. if you don't have a strong second passport. Welcome to the Wealth Uncensored Podcast, straight talk about everything that impacts your wealth. In each episode, I share what I've learned through my own experience and two decades of helping high net worth clients structure their affairs to minimize taxes and protect their assets for the next generation. I'll also feature special guests who are experts in their own field, sharing their knowledge and experience to help you protect what's yours. I'm your host, Jimmy Sexton. Let's dive into today's show. Contemplate expatriation for a number of different reasons. Some want to save on taxes, some want to avoid the complex tax compliance obligations and the associated risks and headaches with that tax compliance. Others want to make investments that Americans are precluded from making. Others want access to financial services that Americans can't get. And others simply just don't agree with what's going on in the U.S. politically. These are all valid reasons to want to exit the U.S. And in recent years, it seems that more and more people are contemplating expatriation. I haven't had so many clients expatriate in a long time. I think I've had more clients expatriate in the last two years than I've had in the 10 years prior to that. But listen, you have to carefully consider expatriation before pulling the trigger especially if you don't have a strong second passport. Expatriation is irrevocable, so once you're out, you're out. You can't say, oops, I made a mistake and get it back if you don't like life as a non-American. You're stuck. I suppose you could try to get it back if you're married to an American or you try to get a green card through the EB-5 program or try to get a worker investor visa, which may eventually lead to citizenship at some point. But there are no guarantees, and these are long-term strategies to pursue. I've done a lot of content on expatriation, including on the tax consequences of expatriation and what to consider before expatriating. I'm not going to go into that stuff here. But I did put some links to my most popular content on expatriation in the description, and I urge you to check it out if you're contemplating expatriation. In this episode, I am focusing solely on the importance of having a strong second passport before you expatriate. By far, the biggest downside of giving up your U.S. citizenship is the travel flexibility it provides you. The U.S. passport is in the top 10 best passports in the world. It gives you access to most of the world through visa-free travel or the ability to get a visa upon arrival. It is also often easier for Americans to get residency visas or residency permits in other countries than it is for citizens of countries with lesser passports. This makes travel and relocation much easier for Americans than citizens of many other countries. Mobility is worth a lot, especially if you're used to being able to travel freely without a visa or getting a visa upon arrival. If you don't have a strong second passport, your vacations are gonna take a lot more planning and there's no guarantee that you're gonna be given a visa for where you wanna go. And on the business front, it can be even worse. Not being able to travel freely could be detrimental to your career. Many companies prefer to hire candidates who have the ability to travel with ease and who can easily relocate to different countries. If you don't have a second passport that allows you to travel and relocate freely and easily, business travel and relocation may be severely limited for you and that might be a negative strike against you when trying to get a job with a multinational company, for example. I was most recently reminded about the value of having a strong second passport by my personal trainer. Young, smart, curious guy. He went to school to be an economist, but he's working in Dubai as a personal trainer. Why? Well, he's from Zimbabwe and he has limited option as to where he can pursue opportunities due to his citizenship. He'd love to travel the world and see the world, but he can't for the same reason. He'd do almost anything for a first-rate passport because it would greatly expand his earning potential and he'd get to see the world. And let's not forget about the security U.S. citizenship offers. At the most basic level, being a U.S. citizen gives you the right to live in the U.S. While the U.S. certainly isn't perfect, it's generally considered a safe country with legal protections and political stability. And its geographic location makes it even safer. It is much less vulnerable to a war spilling over than places like 
Europe, for example. It also has tremendous resources, which allows it to be self-sufficient, an advantage that many countries don't have. If shit hits the fan where you're living, you always have the ability to go live in the U.S., which is likely better than the alternatives that you'd have with a lesser passport. But you're also giving up access to U.S. consular support and its emergency services. The U.S. is known for going to great lengths to protect its citizens abroad, like getting them out of war zones, for example, or engaging in prisoner swaps to get their citizens home. There's probably no country in the world that does more to protect and rescue its citizens abroad when in need. That's a huge advantage of being a U.S. citizen. If you find yourself in trouble abroad, you can be confident that the U.S. will most likely come to your aid. It may take them a while, longer than you'll want it to take them, but they will likely come for you. This is a lot to give up. But also keep in mind that Americans aren't beloved everywhere. In some places in the world, being an American is a liability and a risk to your personal safety. So being American is not always good for your health. A lot of Americans contemplating expatriation see it as a fast and easy solution to their tax problems. But remember, it comes with significant downsides and it can't solve past tax issues, right? You have to be tax compliant, you have to file your final tax return, and then it can help you save taxes and not have to deal with all the compliance mess in the future, but it's not gonna solve your past tax problem. Like I said, many people rush to expatriate because they want out of the US tax net. They're tired of paying taxes and spending obscene amounts of money to comply with the US's ungodly complex tax filing requirement as it comes to foreign income and assets. You know, as an example, I have some longtime clients who are now considering expatriation for exactly this reason. They're tired of paying U.S. taxes and they're tired of having the compliance risk and cost associated with filing tax returns every year. They're just sick of it. The problem is that they don't have a strong second citizenship. They have a citizenship from a relatively unstable Middle Eastern country. But for now, things seem okay, but the situation could deteriorate rapidly. If they expatriated, they'd be stuck with nowhere to go. As U.S. citizens, they could go back to America. Expatriation is a very personal decision, and only you can decide if it's right for you. For me, it was, but I was fortunate enough to have been born with a solid second citizenship. If my second citizenship wasn't as strong as it is, I probably wouldn't have expatriated. My point is, Think long and hard before expatriating. And don't just think of what your situation looks like today. Think about the worst case scenario in the future. You know that old saying, hope for the best and plan for the worst. That definitely holds true with expatriation. To recap, we've covered some of the advantages of being a US citizen, the repercussions of expatriating, and what to consider when contemplating expatriation. For those thinking about expatriation, the first step is to determine whether or not you are a covered expatriate, since covered expatriates are subject to an exit tax regime and their U.S. heirs or recipients of gifts will be subject to the highest estate or gift tax then in effect, currently 40%. To help people figure out if they're a covered expatriate or not and estimate their exit tax in the event they are, I created an expatriation exit tax calculator. I'll put the download link in the description. Thank you for joining me on Wealth Uncensored, where we help you minimize taxes and protect your wealth for the next generation. If you like our show, be sure to subscribe and leave a review. And if you have any questions or suggestions for future episodes, we'd love to hear from you. You can email us at info at esquiregroup.com. And don't forget to visit Esquire Group's website for more information on how we can help you secure your wealth. I'll be dropping knowledge again next week. Don't forget to join us.